Hi, today I would like to show you how you can use a mathematical term called Fourier transform to use epicycles to draw any kinds of line drawing you want. And this is the example uh, posted like 10 years ago drawing Homer Simpson one stroke uh, line drawings just by using bunch of epicycles uh, rotating circles around and you can actually uh, implement this uh, method by uh, implementing a implementing Fourier transform so I would like to show how you can actually do this uh, using Houdini uh, since that's my favorite software right now so it's uh, in order to understand Fourier transform you need to be aware of complex plane and a trigonometry um, so let's say you want to specify a point on a 2d plane you can actually specify it using complex plane like this if the if the point is on the circle of radius of one then you can specify the point position by using cosine t t is an angle from the x-axis plus i sine t and the one that have that doesn't have i on mul that doesn't multiply by i stands for the x-axis position and the one that is multiply by i it stands for the y-axis so the cosine t is actually a x uh, x coordinates of this point and i sine t and the sine t is a y coordinate of this point and by saying that t could be any number like from 0 to 2 pi this uh, equation determines that it is a actually a a circle of radius of 1 and if you wanna change the radius you just have to multiply this cosine t and i t by radius r to specify the radius so that's the basic of uh, using trigonometry and complex plane to specify the point position now let's say you have this complex single path stroke um, that you want to trace using mathematical equations and if you think about it, it you can actually uh, draw this thing by using a multiple epicycles uh, which means a rotating circles and uh, with each of them have different radiuses and the speed of rotation could be rotating on the clockwise directions or counterclockwise clockwise, um, directions by having all sorts of different uh, epicycles combining together you can actually draw this kind of complex uh, path and the equation itself could be shown as this so let's say this pass is ft and the c is coefficient and e is a stands for the epicycles and you can also see this there's a number on next to the e like minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2 3 uh, this means that uh, by multiplying 
minus value to it it will it means that it's rotating on the clockwise direction and the number 3 to 1 determines the speed uh, how fast it rotates during the t goes from 0 to 2 pi so if the 0 go if the t goes 0 to 2 pi which means one rotation if e have minus 3 i t it means it will rotate three times during one big uh, rotation uh, on the other hand if it's 2 i t positive 2 i t this means it will rotate kind of uh, counterclockwise for two times during one stroke so <clears throat> by having all those all sorts of these uh, equations together added up together you can actually simulate this path now the point is that you always have to start from zero and add up by 1 and minus 1 and 2 and minus 2 and minus 3 and minus 3 and so on um, key point is that more uh, this means that the, this is the number of epicycles and it always have to be uh, a odd number the total number of the epicycles have to be a odd number which means uh, 0, 3, no, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and so on. And more and more epicycles you have, more accurate you'll be able to trace this original path. And the equation itself could be uh, written like this uh, using a sum of sequence of coefficient n, coefficient n times e and t now now that you have an equations for this pass ft equal um, mass of coefficient times e and t uh, what you have to know is how you can actually calculate this or have this value for each epicycles now <clears throat> this is where the Fourier transform comes by using the equations like this uh, 1 over 2 pi integral of ft and e minus nit and dt you can actually get each epicycle's uh, coefficient value now the problem again is then how you can actually get this ft which is still a mystery at this point um, this is where a trigonometry comes in order to calculate this one actually um, if you look at the pass and divide it into some points and each point, let's say each point stands for the x, t, and y, t, where the, when the t is a goes from 0 to 2 pi. <clears throat> and this x, t, and y, t can be actually, actually shown as x, t plus i, y, t. Uh, as I said, x stands for the uh, x-axis uh, value and the value that is multiplied by i stands for the y-axis so it's actually a yt so xt plus i yt means the specific position at this point and by multiplying this by and this xt plus i yt actually actually stands for this f T. and by and you can also uh, deconstruct this e uh, minus n i t using 
a cosine and sine trigonometry. As I said, EIT means cosine uh, T plus I sine T. But if you just uh, use minus N to multiply by T, you can actually write like this cosine minus n t plus i multiply by sine minus n t and this cosine minus n t whether it's positive or negative for the angles inside a cosine it's always a positive value so you can just get rid of a minus value here and for the sine uh, whenever you have minus value inside a sine's angle the whole thing will be multiplied by negative values so it will be minus i sine t and now you can just multiply xt plus i y t times cosine n t minus i sine n t and the thing with a complex plane complex uh, calculations if you multiply i by i you will get minus one so that's the only point you have to be careful and if you calculate this through you'll what you what you will have is xt times cosine nt plus yt sine nt which is a x axis value because it's it is not uh, multiply by i and you have x minus xt sine nt plus yt cosine nt which is an uh, y axis value because it is multiply by i and that's the whole uh, calculations uh, for this specific point xt and yt and by adding all this up all this value together for each point on the complex uh, single path like you add up the this value for this point and this point and this one point this point until it goes to a end point <coughs> from the first point to the end point and finally multiplying by dt means that it, it also means that divided by the number of these points so if you have 100 points divided by divided from the this pass and you add 100 times of this value for each point then finally you just have to divide all these added up value by 100 divided by 100 <coughs> Uh, so that's the equation explained here and finally you can uh, divide it by divide it divide all these value by 2 pi uh, it's just to this is just to um, scale up if the value is too big but sometimes you don't really need to use this uh, if the size is good enough so it depends uh, if you want to use this or not so this is not optional I, I think and the important thing is this one so that's how you can calculate the x-axis and y-axis <coughs> for each point and then finally the the final coefficient x-axis value and y-axis value will be determined by calculating all these things as a CN and once you have CN co coefficient value then you will be able to get each uh, epicycles uh, radiuses and directions and you can actually draw this kind of um, epicycle connections in order to draw a 
complex um, drawing, complex single stroke drawings like this by just rotating each epicycles at specific speed and radiuses. <clears throat> now there are two videos I would really like to recommend watching in order to understand in order to deeply understanding the concept of Fourier transform and epicycles, uh, one is this uh, epicycles complex Fourier series in Homer Simpson's orbit by Martha Lodger. It's pretty easy to understand what is going on with these equations. And in order to under deeply understand the mathematical equations, why it's been written like this, I really highly suggest watching this Fourier analysis for the rest of us by Gold Plated Goof. These are the two videos I really recommend watching in order to understand what, I what I'm going to do in Houdini. So, <clears throat> enough for the theory, let's try to implement that in Houdini. Now let's start from making geometry node, go inside, and first thing first, let's import a some vector image that you want to trace. And I already made one uh, image using Illustrator this uh, Houdini application logo uh, it, it is made by one stroke uh, and I would like to use this to trace using epicycles now um, I would like to since it's in some arbitrary position right now I would like to position it on the center then place it on the X Z plane so that it will be easy to see and easy to trace so let's do that first I'm gonna delete all the attributes since there are some attributes that I don't need like colors and stuff and let's transform this to the center position First of all, let's translate it to the center by using SCX, SCY, and SCZ, right? And rotate this by 90 degrees, and I have lost it so, uh, since I have to set the pivot as well. The pivot will be SCX, SCY. And S E Z, right? And also, let's look at from the top. It is a bit skewed, I think, S and it's on the wrong direction, I think. So it. Let's multiply the x scale by 1 and well, okay, I'll just go with this. And let's mult let's scale whole thing up a little bit more so that it will be more than 1 as a uh, radius. So something like this, okay, it's good. Let's go back to the perspective view. Okay, so you can see the Houdini logo here. And as you can see, it is right now a closed surface. So let's just take out curve by using the carve. Uh, node let's type this zero here right 
and next thing if you look at the points for this pass it's a bit uh, dense at some point really scarce at some point so I would like to make it um, I would like to resample this curve so that each uh, length of the edges will be about the same size so resample and actually I would like to uh, be able to s specify the number of points so I'm gonna set the maximum segments here and for this one I would like to make a parameter to in order to change it afterwards so I'm gonna make a controller node using null and let's make a parameter here okay so the name I will just name segments and apply and the range is from let's say 0 to 1000 okay so I'll just set the maximum 1000 and copy this and paste it into the segment value now you have 1000 points to divide this complex path complex single path and if you look at the numbers it's actually counting from 1 to 1 so that's okay <coughs> next to each other is one and limited by one so that's fine now next um, now here comes a part I use Fourier transform analysis or Fourier analysis to actually get the the coefficient for each epicycles. Now in order to get it you first need to specify the number of uh, epicycles you want to use so let's have that as a parameter as well and let's say integer and epicycles num cycles num and let's say this number could be from 0 to something like 500 now the point here is that uh, the number of epicycles must always be less than the number of segments if the number of epicycles goes over the number of segments then you will ha you will have the final output to be really strange or really stretched uh, skewed weird shape so keep in mind that you always have to have the number of epicycles less than the number of segments number of points on the stroke that's uh, one thing to be careful and uh, apply accept and let's uh, write a vex code to use a Fourier transform right now what I would like to use for the uh, wrangles I would like to oops, I would like to use a attribute at wrangle and actually connect this resample points to the second input of this attribute angle. I'm I'm gonna call this Fourier transform and I'm gonna set it to detail. Uh, since I'm not gonna use a number of points to calculate I'm just gonna calculate once okay 
Now let's have the number of epicycles first by promoting the parameter here and copy this number of epicycles. Let's start from something like 10. Copy parameter <coughs> and paste it here. Right and also let's have a array of coefficient as an empty array to store all the coefficients and also a radiuses radius for each epicycles which could also be calculated by coefficient but I'll just have it and also a array of um, number of ends which it stands for the this here this n coefficient n number so it could be either 0 minus 1 my plus 1 minus 2 plus 2 or something like that so n could be from minus negative infinite to positive infinite if you have an infinite number of ends I mean okay now <clears throat> go back and here comes the calculations I'm gonna open the editor now First of all, let's make a for loop from, uh, let's say n equals zero, equal, uh, as I said, the number n for the coefficient um, must have a pair of positive and negative value. So if there's a positive number 3, there will always have to be minus 3 as well. And if it's starting from minus 10, it should always end with a positive 10. So that means uh, what I can say is minus num and n until num and add up n by 1. So this actually means is that you uh, I have set the number <coughs> and parameter as a number of epicycles but actually the final number of epicycles will be a parameterized number epicycles num multiply by 2 so you have double the number of epicycles because you have minus minus n and the positive n value that's what it is <coughs> and let's first have a initial coefficient value set it as 0 and let's have another for loop i which is a number of points on this complex single path and increment i by 1 <coughs> right and the first thing I would like to do is to get the position of this each point uh, on the path so you can use the point function which is connected to the input one and i and let's get the x value and the t value uh, uh, z value the position x will be the x coordinates for the points and the float tc will be a Z coordinates of this uh, path. Now, in 
the sketch I said that the this direction is y axis but in Houdini the this axis is z so I'm just gonna use z instead of y so be careful about it about it now <coughs> I also wanna have the angle for uh, the um, angle for the for the t value which I explained somewhere here this t which is from 0 to 2 pi so since we have we are making a loop from 0 to number of n points uh, you can actually get the t value I'm gonna set as t angle as uh, first you have a float number of i and divided by float number of n points and multiply by 2 times pi which will be uh, seen as a angle t like this right makes sense I hope and finally a nt which what I want to get is this one nt I should have set the i to here so in order to get an nt you just have to multiply this t angle by n since n is from minus number of epicycles to the plus positive number of epicycles now you have uh, I think you have everything you need to calculate the coefficient let's go back to the calculation see what kind of calculation you need to do for x and y axis in case of Houdini it's the axis now for the x-axis you have to multiply x times cosine nt plus y times sine nt and for the y-axis you multiply minus x sine nt plus y cosine nt so to do that in Houdini the x the final x value will be dx uh, times cosine nt plus tz times sine nt and float y e I mean float z equals tz times cosine nt plus oh, minus t tx times sine nt now that's the calculations that I need to do now finally oops, you have to uh, multiply by dt uh, which also means divided dividing the whole value by the number of points so <coughs> x divided by number of points make sure this is float I'm gonna cast it to float and Z as well divided by a number of endpoints okay apply let's see there's no errors hope there's no errors okay seems okay for now <clears throat> now the final coefficient value will be uh, add up the coefficient by set x 0 z so for each point I'm adding coefficient value 
and summing up so this is stands for the this integral so the for loop i equals 0 from 2 pi is uh, this integral value here right now that you have a final coefficient append that coefficient to the array also let's have an a radius for the um, epicycles our radiuses and you can uh, uh, you can get the radius of the coefficient by using the length function of the vector from the coefficient vector and also append the number of n value to the ns array <coughs> now let's get uh, over the loop uh, by the way this this loop the parent loop n from minus n num to the num stands for the this uh, sum for the sequence okay now that I have three arrays coefficients radiuses and uh, ns uh, numbers uh, what I want to do is to make a point for each coefficients and set the attributes for each point with the radius and the number of n. Okay, so I'm gonna full loop again until number of coefficients and uh, first let's get the radius which is radius is at i and also let's get the coefficient and coefficient i and also let's get the num n at ns i right and let's add a point at coefficient position and set point at riv uh, i'm gonna set the radius to the p scale and also set point at riv and at pt and right <coughs> apply and see if there if there's any errors no seems okay and i see some points uh um, plotted on the plane let's set the background to black so that I can see it a bit more easily uh, where was it dark okay <clears throat> okay um, now apply and accept let's go back to the network and let's see the geometry spreadsheet and you, as you can see you have the n from minus 10 to 10 and for uh, each of the points you have this p scale and also a point position which stands for the uh, coefficient value x and z now at this point you can actually draw an epicycles uh, together with a tracing uh, image 
but I would like to make it uh, as an animation like I showed it as in a Homer Simpson video so let's try to do that using a solver okay now before doing that there are one thing I would like to do uh, is that um, as you can see the at the P scale it the value is actually not going from like the maximum value to the minimum value or minimum value to the maximum value it's it's rather going from like it starts from point zero one and point one and zero point zero four and it's pretty random as you can see the sequence of this p scale and p scale uh, as i said it stands for the radius of the circle so if the radius of the circle is random at the sequence it the 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 final epicycles uh, coordinates coordination will be a bit um, I would say uh, ugly uh, I mean maybe it's not but um to make it more prettier I would like to sort this out from the maximum p scale to the minimum p scale uh, I mean you don't really need to do that because you can actually start from any epicycles to get the final output but just to make sure just to make easier to see what's going on how the circle is rotating I'm just gonna sort it out from the maximum to minimum for the p-scale so I'm gonna use the sort and go to the parameter and sort the point by attribute P scale and since I want to start from the maximum value so I'm gonna set the reverse point sort if I look at it it starts from point 8 and end it as a point zero 01 and that's cool all right and here comes a solver in order to make an animation right and if you want to make a fast uh, calculation you want to increase the subsets but I'm gonna go with the one first go in and let's write some stuff in order to draw a connected app cycle stand there are only one uh, at node you need to have which is again an app attribute wrangle and set it to detail since you want to just calculate once and place it on the first input and what you want to do is to change the point position as uh, yeah just that, just that change the point position uh, so that it is corresponding to the right position based on the angle and the radiuses now <coughs> uh, let's have an, an a va variable called T in order to specify the current angle of the whole circle whole uh, path which is from 0 to 2 pi and let's use the frames since you want to animate this and multiply by CHF speed in order to control how fast the pass should be drawn and multiply by 0 0.01 so that speed could be set it as a percentage and let's also have a num which comes from an outside network uh, the same as a epicycles number also let's also have a speed variable a parameter here t 
to control the speed. Let's say it's from 0 to 1. And I'll start from point 0.0. Point 0.1, I mean. Now let's copy the epicycle num parameter and go back to the solver and paste it to here first. Let's also paste it here as well and rename the epicycle num to speed, which it, which I have set inside a controller node. Right. Uh, check if you have the right value. Okay. Now, uh, let's make a temporal vector position. I'll call this temp position set to 0, 0, 0. And let's make a loop for each uh, numbers. And as I said, there are, if I set the number to something like 10, you have a double the number of epicycles uh, plus uh, one, which is a when the coefficient number is zero. So as I said, there is like either zero, three, five, seven, eleven. I mean 9, 11, 13, 15 or something like that. So the whole the total number of num epicycles will be 2 times num plus 1 and make a loop for that and for each loop uh, get the end value from the point attribute Right, also let's get the point position. Right, and ca let's calculate the current angle from the T that I have set before. So the angle will be T times and N times 2.0 times pi. I'm using n here uh, since each epicycle have mm, different speed. Uh, if it's one, it's a counterclockwise uh, single speed. Like if the if the t goes from zero to pi, then it just goes uh, one rotation. One rotation. If it's minus 2, then to the clockwise direction, it will rotate 2 times when the t goes from 0 to 2 pi. So that's that. That's the angle. And let's get the nx, which will be the new x position of the point, which is position x times... What I need to do is that... the these um, point position, which is which comes from the coefficient value, is the initial position of the point uh, in on the circle, on the epicycle circle. And what you need to do is that using this angle, you wanna rotate this each point. Uh, either to the clockwise, uh, counterclockwise or the clockwise direction. And in order to rotate the <coughs> uh, vector, there are there's uh, equations to do that using a uh, trigonometry. So for the x, you multiply the x position by cosine angle minus position z times sine angle and flon and y will multiply x by sine angle plus position and z multiply by 
sine angle. So this is the rotation function to the vector rotations. You just have to remember this. Uh, that's the trigonometry stuff in order to rotate vector to specific angle. Now that's that. Uh, let's set the point. Let's set point attrib for the position to temp position. Now at this point, temp position is just zero, so it always starts from zero. Though, uh, for the next temp position, you want to increment the x and nx and nz, which you have just calculated here. So as a result, and I have an error. Okay, have to, this have to be in zero. And as a result, it'll be like this. <clears throat> and starting from almost zero, zero, zero. I mean, zero, starting from zero, zero, zero. Right. And as a total number, you have 21 points here. All right. Let's go back and if you play it seems you went off the grid okay looks a bit weird let's check that out again okay Let's check it. Oh yeah, I was mistaken. Uh, since for each frame, I need to, I, I shouldn't use the previous frames um, value, which was updated f by the by this value. I should always use the constant value, which comes from the input, the first input. So I should use this one. I should connect the this input one instead of the previous frame here always in order to calculate the correct value so because i'm not going to use the uh, updated value here for this one for this one to rotate so in that case i mean in that case i might not need to use the solver itself I, uh, maybe I can just uh, make draw make the drawings even an animation uh, without using the solver but um, I want to use uh, this trail node later on in order to make it the tracing trail uh, and for that one, I think I needed to use solver, so I'm, I'm gonna keep going with the solver. So if I play this, you can see it's kind of uh, moving around around this uh, axis, uh, around this value. So seems something's going on, something's correct. Gonna set the total value to be well, 360. So I think or five hundred since I have five hundred value. Uh, let's see. Now as you can see right now it's just the points that I cannot really see what's going on. I mean if the, if it's if it's really a rotating epicycle it, or not, so let's draw that out from the points now um, <clears throat> in order to do that um, first I would like to let's look at look at the value here at the geometry 
and starting from from the p scale point a to p scale point zero one right and the first value is <coughs> Zero, 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 right, okay. Now, uh, one thing I want to do is to delete the last point because uh, this last point will not be the center of the point, I think. Uh, so, what I'm gonna do is sort it out, sort to reverse for the point and 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 delete the selected point for the first one for the points and sort it again with the reverse points <coughs> and next I want to make a circle which is on the XZ plane. I'm gonna set it as polygon, something like division of 40, 36, and copy this circle to this point. Now I see some uh, circles connecting to each other. Uh, it's a bit hard to see, so I'm gonna hide this point and let's make an open circle. Okay. <clears throat> now let's also connect all the points together to see the lines. So I'm gonna make the line from the solver polygon by and let's make the color of this uh, line a bit easier to see I'm gonna set it to red okay and let's merge these circles and lines together and let's animate this to see what's going on. Uh, let's make it real time. And you can see a circle is rotating, epicycle is rotating as and trying to draw something. And the, the tip of this connected circle will be the place where the final uh, line will be drawn. So in order to draw that, what I want to do is to get just the tip of this point by deleting and delete not selected, zero. Then you will get the the end point position and that's where you want to have a tracing starts and I am gonna use a trail in order to trail it and by this you will able to see I think you need more lengths here let's say a thousand and see I guess this is why you need to increase ok 
Okay, so... Right. Now you have something... Now I'm gonna set it to something like 400. Which will be faster, okay. Alright, and since this is just the point right now, I'm gonna make it to the polyline. Just to see it clearly. And... Let's set the color of the circle to something like yellow or blue and add this trail line here. Uh, it's a bit hard to see. Yeah, let's go with this and if you play this You can see the circle is actually trying to draw something and this something should be uh, related to the one I imported which is a Houdini's logo but as you can see right now it's not really looking like looks like Houdini's logo this is the original Houdini logo, but it's not really what I want, as you can see. So, in order to get this more accurate, as I said, you need to increase the number of epicycles here. So let's do that. And also let's speed up the pass a little bit more so I'm gonna set it to 0.2 for the speed and as for the number of epicycles I am gonna set it to 100 now if I play it I think if I look at the original pass it got it get more close to the original pass uh -huh. it's pretty close I think let's see till the end well something like here it's a bit roundy right here around and I think I need it more pass. About as you can see, it's going better than uh, before. So if I increase more, like epicycles number to 500, then what would happen? I reset the simulations in order to update. Right. Yeah, it looks better than before. I mean, the difference between 100 and 500 is a uh, not that obvious but still you can see the difference <clears throat> now right now the segments I mean is thousand and the cycles number uh, is 500 and the speed is Point two. <clears throat> if I set it to point 0.5 
more speed you have, uh, a bit less accurate you'll get because the point position between the paths is more bigger. As you can see, it is drawing as expected based on the imported um, uh, logo uh, one stroke image it is indeed tracing based on the ro rotation of epicycles and this, this is pretty cool and I am going to finally maybe <coughs> probably thicken the final trace to make it more obvious to see Paul poly wire let the speed be two trail to be 500 something and let's set the color of the trail to be like orange set it to the same shaded and now this is it now so this is the way you can trace any kinds of single stroke complex uh, pass image using a specific number of epicycles using a Fourier transform and the result is pretty amazing interesting I think I hope you find it interesting as well um, Thank you for watching. <clears throat> I'm gonna post the files into the GitHub linked in the video's descriptions. If you're interested, you can download it and check how it's been done. Okay, that's it. Thank you.